Very welcome to Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. Another picture perfect day, and this is our rainy season. And I mean, we've been so blessed this year, uh -huh, but every Tuesday seems to be prettier than the next. Anyway, <clears throat> what is Rhythmia? Rhythmia is a life advancement center that uses ayahuasca uh, and other modalities to bring about something called a soul merger. Uh huh, or a soul, a soul reclamation. <coughs> Excuse me, please. In certain uh, cultures, it's called a soul reclamation. It goes back uh, to about twelve thousand years. We call it a soul merger, and and we built a whole business to assist in that process. And how well does it work? Well, as of today, ninety-seven point one one percent of everybody who's gone through the doors and there's been 12,500 people through the doors have reported uh, a miracle during their stay. The more interesting part is six months later, uh, they received a second survey and 91.88% of them say that that miracle is still working in their life and that this was the week that changed their life. Uh -huh. That's how, what kind of place uh, this is. Uh, so some of these were, were a top 10 resort in the world on, on TripAdvisor with over 2000 reviews. Uh, and, and again, like I said, we had 12,500 people through the door, all kinds of people come here. A lot of, uh, a lot of entertainers, a lot of, uh, athletes, uh, a lot of of business people and a lot of regular people like you and me. Lots of people come to this place and, and uh, when they do, it changes their life. I'm so lucky to be a part of something as wild as this, and it is a wild one. Uh, it's just a combination of plant medicine and all these other modalities that bring about this wild week. And that's the only way that I know how to explain it. Because if I use any other term, it short sells it. It is a wild week. It's a wild one. Well, last week we had about 90 people here. Uh, Jack Canfield was here this week. Uh, a little bit less, but still super, super, super busy. Uh, and we're busy every week. And in, in, uh, in 2023 starts every other week is Title Juanito week. So it's going to just be packed, always packed. Okay. A little bit about what this is called Blessed by Design. In the last series of 10, uh, what we did is we highlighted uh, <coughs> surveys and studies that had been done on uh, the attributes of success. And in this, uh, in this series, we're going to talk about how to set up your design uh, so that the blessings occur. Because everything we do today affects uh, how our life unfolds tomorrow. It's just the way that it is. And last week I talked about a lot of, a lot of different things, but I'm gonna go back in and drill into some of those a little bit more. Do not rely on motivation. If you rely on motivation, you will fail. I want you to hear that. If you rely on motivation, you're going to fail. Because motivation is inconsistent. There is not an athlete, a business person, a mom, a dad, a, a boyfriend, a husband, da, da, that every day is motivated. It's impossible. It's an impossibility based on the way the human brain works. It's impossible. So if you base your action items and your action items should involve a daily practice on motivation, you if you, if you base your business uh, theories on motivation, you fail. You fail. Motivation or relying on motivation is a, is a stepping stone to failure. It simply will not work. It does not work. What does work? What works is honoring agreements. What works is honoring agreements. Uh-huh. So 
when you honor agreements with yourself, you honor agreements with your soul, you honor agreements with your brothers and sisters, you honor agreements in your business community. That is what works. And what do I mean by an agreement? When I say, hey, look at Jerry, you're going to get up every day, whether you like it or not, whether you slept good or not, and you're going to go up to the gym and you're going to work out every day. I hereby make that agreement and I declare it an agreement. Uh huh. That in itself, when I honor that, and I do, when I honor that, that is what I'm talking about in agreement. Uh huh. So you set up your life based on these agreements that you know if you do will outpicture in the particular uh, the particular life that you want. And at one point, what I wanted was to own or to be heavily involved in uh, a spiritual center, in a beautiful community, in a great place, and then to live the other half of the year in Turks and Caicos and to have these different things in my life, great relationships with my kids, enough money to, to enjoy life and all these things, they didn't happen by accident. They were uh, absolutely written down and then absolutely agreed to that I would do these things. Uh -huh. Because if you rely on motivation, <clears throat> there's going to be days you don't work out. There's going to be days you don't pray. There's going to be days you don't do your work at work. There's going to be days that you let your spouse down. There's going to be days that you let your kid down. So do not rely on motivation. That is the truth. Now, can you use motivation when you're feeling down? Yeah. Yeah. Like you absolutely it's there for, but what I would rather see you rely on is the agreement with yourself because, because these are self-fulfilling things. So uh, I don't ever remember a day that I, that I didn't want to go to the gym. And I went to the gym and was sorry that I did. I don't remember that. I remember days where I figure, ah, there's no way. I don't feel good. I'm tired. I'm not going to the gym. But I went anyway. And then 10 minutes into to it, I'm thinking, man, I'm glad I did. And that changes the mood. So don't rely on, on motivation. Rely on your agreement to motivate you. Uh-huh. So there's this this amazing feeling of satisfaction when you do the hard things in your business, you don't feel like doing them and they get done first in the morning. So even when I'm, when I'm setting up my day, I do the things that are hardest first and then get to the easier things as, as the day ticks on. And that, that makes, uh, that makes the experience one that self motivates, right? And self-motivation is exactly what you're looking for. Uh -huh. So, and not that I don't listen to Tony Robbins. I mean, Tony Robbins is amazing. And there's a bunch of guys who are Gary Vee. And there's a bunch of guys, Michael Beckwith, who are amazing. And that to me is more prayer than motivation. Uh -huh. but, but in any event, yes, you still do it. But man, get to your agreements first. Make your agreements and your life will outpicture like you want it. So, from a merged place, you pick those things that you're going to become a beneficial presence on the planet for. You figure out what you're going to have to do daily in order to get them. And then you make that agreement with yourself. And I'm going to tell you something. The more that you can honor your agreement with yourself, the more you're going to be able to honor your agreements with your, with your family, with your community, with your business, with your spouse, with your kids with your parents. It's just how it works. So by honoring that agreement with ourselves, making that agreement and writing out, that's kind of like goal setting is writing out an agreements and agreeing to them. I go one step further and I make an agreement. I, I just write simple agreements with myself. Uh-huh. You can do the same thing. Now, when you look at, so, so, so the next thing I'm going to tell you is this, is that in business, there are people that try to build things to get somewhere. I try to remove things. If you take a look at, if you take a look at how I look at business, it's a lot like how I look at a uh, personal development, the removal of things, because in my belief, you already have everything. And there's something in it that you already have that's impeding you from getting where you got to go. 
So it's the removal of something, not the addition of something. When I look at a business, the first thing I look at, I say, what can we get rid of? What in the offer can we get rid of to make it less confusing? What in the delivery can we get rid of to make it less expensive? What, what can we get rid of, not what can we add? When you look at things that way, there is something that, that some other subtle agreement that is keeping you from getting what you want and you want to try to remove that agreement. The other way to look at it is what is blocking, what is resisting where I'm going. Uh -huh. If you wrote it down, if you wrote it down, you made an agreement and you see that there's this resistance, well, there's all different types of resistance, okay? So, so I want to talk to you about that. Just because there's resistance, that does not mean you stop. As a matter of fact, it means you go harder. Uh huh. So, so uh, I open a store and not a, not as many people show up as I want, but the people who show up are extremely happy. That's shown me I'm on the right path. So now I dig down and dig down and and find a way to survive until the public catches on that what I'm doing in my store is really unique and good. That's that's that is kind of like the the term and that's why when you look at these things look at them in five seven ten year and i like to use decades look at them in decades and be prepared to go the decade uh, if you're going to get good at something be prepared to go the decade we opened the doors here i believe in 2000 what would that be hunt 15, 6, no, I bought it in 15. We opened in 17. No, we got licensed in 16. So we opened in 16. So in 2026, we're 10 years, right? That's just how I look at it. That's what it takes to build a world-class business. That's what it takes to get great at, at something. That's what it takes to become a, a, a great guitarist. That's what it's it takes to become a great pianist. That's what it takes to master the craft of acting. Take a look at it. It's in 10 year chunks, right? So during that 10 years, there's going to be a lot of resistance. What you have to do is honor your agreement. Now there are different types of resistance. There's continual resistance. So if you see something that is continually resistant, so something in your offering or something that you're doing is creating this, this, consistent, continual type of resistance. You analyze that resistance and then you adjust around that resistance, right? I want you to hear me. So let's say you have this offering and there's, there's, there's something that keeps coming up that people are objecting to and they keep object, objecting to the same thing, the same thing, same thing. And it's not one out of 100 or one out of 30, it's 20 out of 40. Now, all of a sudden, you got to look at that piece of resistance and you got to adjust around it. Never break the agreement, just adjust the offering around that resistance. There is outlier resistance. And I want to tell you what that is. Outlier resistance, I don't even want you to, to, to care about. What is outlier resistance? Uh, outlier resistance is one out of 100 people say that you're. So let's start it. 97 out of 100 say it's the best pizza they ever had in their life. And one out of 100 says it's the worst thing ever. Don't pay attention to the one out of 100. No, no probabilities, no, no percentages uh, understand them, right? There are, there are, there is karmic resistance. Karmic resistance is a little different. Uh, I don't know how to say this. So, so let's say a person has three relationships. Uh -huh. his, his first wife, or, or his wife, and that was a great relationship, and then this horrible relationship, and then another beautiful relationship. And his norm are, are his beautiful relationships, but this one is really rotten, terrible. Uh -huh. that, that is a karmic debt. That is a lesson wrapped in a debt. So when you see things like that, you made your agreement, you're moving forward, all of a sudden you get this, this thing that is not common, but is close to you and it sticks on you. 
the sooner that you can grab that lesson, the sooner that the debt is paid. And it might be paid from this life. It might be paid from previous lives, but you got to see the different types of resistance because that is resistance, right? So when you see that, the quickest way to move through it is not to bounce off it and do something else. It's to experience it, to understand what the lesson is, to agree to learn the lessons, and then the debt is paid, and then you can get rid of that thing. Uh-huh. So there's different types of resistance. There's resistance I don't want you to pay attention to. That's 97 out of 100 people are saying you have the best pizza on earth, and one person says it's bad. Don't listen to that. What you want to do is find a new 97, a new 97 to keep exposing your pizza to, right? Yeah. So I can tell you in this session, like in these sessions of the next 10 of designing this, I can tell you what works. I can't tell you why. And this is where faith comes in. So I'm going to tell you, I know that if you write your goals down, we know that that based on the Harvard study, 10 years later, you have a thousand percent, like you're way, way, way better off. We know this, right? I can't tell you why that works. I don't know why writing something down or doing these agreements, I don't know why they work. I just know that they work. Uh huh. So you can spend your time debating whether something works or not. And then the only resource that you have to ever make the life that you want is dripping away the sands of time while you're debating what works and what doesn't, when all the data is out there over what works is there and you're jerking around, you're wasting that time that you can't get back, right? So my whole thing is the first thing is rule number one, do not waste time. Do not willingly waste time. You might waste time by being wrong about something that might waste some time, but you can quickly correct and get back on. Don't waste time in debate, truly wasting time. So I can't tell you why and, and how the mechanisms of the brain and, and that interaction with the universe that makes writing down goals work so well. I can only tell you that it works so well. And I'm going to ask you to have faith in that. What does faith look like? Well, faith in something we truly don't fully understand how it works most of us do not understand that when you hit that light switch, how the light goes on. I, for one, don't. I don't know where that electricity comes from. It comes from some, elect some electric company that I pay, and they somehow deliver that electricity to where my finger hits that switch and it turns on that light. That is faith. And now I, I do it. I, I do it so regularly and with such faith, I don't even think about it. I just hit that button and the light comes on at night and however that happens, happens. If you said, Jerry, you have to explain how that light comes on or it's not going to come on, I'd be, uh, I would be in the dark, so to speak. And so would almost everybody who's not an electrician, right? So, what I'm asking you to do is that this data is out there. You believe this data uh -huh, because that is the light switch. So the first thing to do is to write these goals down and then to make agreements and then to analyze what is keeping us. What is the resistance from these things? What is the resistance? Is the resistance an outlier? Is the resistance real? Is the, resi is the resistance a karmic death? that's wrapped in a lesson, those are things that you have to figure out. And the sooner that you figure them out, the easier it becomes to move on. Now, all of these things require work. So, so I want to talk about that in a second because there's a big, a big uh, constituency that's growing on the internet, thanks to the internet, that believes there is some way, uh-huh, to get everything you want in life without working. And they're selling these programs and they're making money from them. So the creators of the programs are doing some work and, and, and having these programs created and selling them. But they're telling you that there's a way for you to do it without doing anything. And that, in my experience, 
is absolute baloney. And there's a way to waste a chunk of your time. So the first pill that you must swallow is that it's going to be hard and it's going to take a long time. Uh -huh. Once you get past that and you say, I'm not going to rely on motivation. I'm going to rely on an agreement and I'm going to make that agreement with myself. And no matter what the hell happens, I'm going to honor that agreement with myself. And then I'm going to watch my progress and look at the, what I call resistance points and see what they are. Are they real? Are they outliers? Are they karmic? Uh-huh. And then, and then if they're karmic, how quickly can I learn them to get through it so I can get rid of it? Uh-huh. So there's all of these things and it requires work and, and that requires, um, alone time. Yep and self-reflection time. And that's why it's so important, even if we're in a relationship or, or a family that we get by ourselves and we allow time for self-reflection so that we can see these things and then, and then act accordingly, because this is kind of what, uh, what I call a cybernetic takeaway. When I make this agreement of how I want this thing to look, I have a visual of what I want my life to look like. I have a visual. A lot of people use storyboards and stuff, but I know, I know what, what I want it to look like. I, I work at my work and I look up to see if I'm on that path. If I'm not on that path, I say, okay, what's the resistance? And I either keep pushing or I bend it a little bit to get there. That's a cybernetic takeaway. Uh-huh. That's a cybernetic takeaway. And I want you to use those, right? Yeah. So... <clears throat> The same thing in our businesses. So those of you that have a, a business and you're focusing on this business and, and growing this business, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to have a complete plan for what that business is and then a complete goal for how that's going to outpicture, right? And then as you're driving towards it, you're looking at your plan, you're looking at the goal, and then you're making adjustments. That's cybernetic takeaways. That's what you have to do if you're going to be a beneficial presence. If this, what you picked, is going to be a beneficial presence, you have to use cybernetic takeaways in order to get there, right? So what I guess the takeaway here today is, is to not rely on motivation. It's to rely on agreements. To pick this thing from a merge place, write it down, make agreements that you're going to do the things that make that thing happen and then stick to them. Stick to them when you're sick, stick to them when you're tired, stick to them when you don't want to. Now there's a big groupie out there who say, well, what happens if you don't feel like it? Or what happens if your gut is telling you not to do it? I'm going to tell you something. Your gut, what you think is your gut, because there's three different places that comes from. But one of the things that people say is that, Oh, I listened to my body. My body told me to take it easy today. My body told me not to work today. My body told me there's this part of me that told me to do something. I'm going to tell you this. Once you make your agreement, you don't listen to anybody. You don't listen to anybody. You do what you say you're going to do. You honor your agreement with yourself first. There will always be time to rest. There will always be another day. Now, that doesn't mean you wake up with 104 fever and I'm telling you to go to the gym. No, I'm telling you that's a physical uh, impairment, right? I'm going to tell you that when you don't feel like it, when you're, when you're tired, when things are going your way uh, to do it. If you're sick, don't go to the gym. If you're very sick, I will say this. If you're slightly sick, going to the gym actually helps. It does. But, but, you know what I'm talking about here. So, so, uh, and, and here's another thing. When you pick this thing, this business, and you have a 10 year plan, there's going to be so many times when you think something flashier, better or different. And you're saying, no, I should quit this and start that. I say, no, 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 that's, that's not an adjustment. That's a, I'm stopping doing this and I'm going to do this. You're constantly in startup and in startup, which is the first three to four years, 
you're always going to have the most resistance. So you quit in the middle of this startup and start another startup. Uh-huh. And there's the more resistance. So you're always in this piece of a resistance and you can't ever get to flow. Flow happens somewhere between your six and your 11. And when it happens, everything gets easier. Everything gets easier. But if you didn't honor your agreement and stick with it, you don't get to experience it. You're back in your third startup at year nine or year 10. Uh huh. You're starting something over a new relationship, a new business, a new job, a new career. You're constantly in startup and all the jewels, all the treasures, all the bonuses, all the richness happens by sticking with something and going through it with it until it starts producing fruit in flow. Uh huh. So think of it like this is that you, you built the road and then you build your house by hand. That's a really hard thing. And it takes, it takes eight years to build that house. And then all of a sudden on the eighth year, one day, you don't have to do anything. You have to give it some maintenance here and there, but you're done. Uh-huh. You've built it. That's this idea. Uh-huh. That's this idea. So when I, when I ask people to sit in reflection, I ask them to look at their resistance points. That's what the medicine shows us when the first thing is what's holding us back. The whole thing is all yours and it's already there. Now, you may have to get rid of a couple things that are keeping you from getting it. Uh huh. It's an act of subtraction, not addition. Even in big businesses, when you see them and they do great things, they start adding a secondary and tertiary goods and services after they're going, after they've established success right? Virgin records then turned into Virgin airlines to Virgin mobile to da, 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 after it had success. And even then it's a very, very, very thought ridden process as to, should we add more things, right? Success in one thing comes first and then we add things, right? But you can't get there. If you keep switching tables, you can't get there. If you quick, if you keep stopping and starting, you have to stick with it. And the only thing that's going to make you stick with it is an agreement with an authentic person. And that means an agreement with yourself, right? And that is the truth. Okay. That's it for this week. I will see you next week. Thank you for sharing this time with me. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. Have a beautiful week. And by God, get to Rhythmia. Get here experience this, this chain of thought. I want to tell you, I see people who come back all the time and they go, man, what a year I've had since I've seen you. What an amazing year, how things are going, man, my job, the kids, the, this, the business, the career, it starts here. Get here, get here and experience it for yourself. Cheers. Have a great week. Talk to you next.